Okay then. Um, all right, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Paul. Um, and I'll be going over, I guess, how to, how to do Nginx installing. I guess that should probably be, I mean, I imagine most people here know how to install packages on their favorite distro. Um, because I'm on Arch, of course, installing it would be along the lines of that, of course. So yeah, yeah, easy enough. I'm not going to, because otherwise it'll mess with my permissions. Um, just so I don't have to do everything as root. Um, so anyway, what you'll get, uh, actually before I do this, I should probably start recording. <laughs> that would help. So I'm not 100% sure what the what other distros are going to be like, um, but this is the default config for at least uh, Nginx on Arch. Um, as you can see, lots of commenting. Um, after looking through a lot of these uh, parameters or options, a lot of them can be <coughs> just omitted because the defaults are very similar, if not the same. Um, so while the default, this one will work, um, and give you a, a nice, you know, welcome for whatever installing Nginx page. Um, I've got a few examples um, of what a minimal, like, just get the job done. That's a fully functional uh, Nginx script uh, or config, rather. Uh, you do need the events um, empty block there, otherwise it'll complain that it's missing um, or that it. Yeah. Uh, other than that, everything goes inside of an HTTP block. Um, fairly straightforward. I, one of the reasons I, I'm actually a fan of Nginx versus uh, Apache is mostly due to the config. Um, you usually end up with configs that are much simpler, a lot less repetition or, or, or uh, duplication. Um, so yeah, in this case, uh, we specify the MIME types. Even that technically doesn't need to be there if you really want to get simple. Um, but that guy is just used so that way it can look at the file extension. If it's a .txt, it'll serve it up as plain slash .txt. Uh, that way the browser knows to view, it, to view it in the browser versus downloading it. And then we've got the catch-all um, octet stream to say if, if it isn't something that we know about, just make the browser download it, essentially. Um, other than that, everything, uh, we've got the server block, which just says uh, it's equivalent to Apache's virtual host block. Um, it's probably the most similar anyway. Uh, so we just say listen on port 80, server name. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter because we only have one, um, one server. If we were to do a bunch of vhosts or a bunch of server blocks, we could give them different things like mug.za, mug.mb.ca have them two different uh, two different blocks if for whatever reason you wanted them to go to different places. Um, so you can have multiples of those. Uh, other than that, we can specify where the root of the website is, so it knows where to serve files out of. And then what the default file uh, Nginx is going to try and serve in the event that the browser doesn't specify one. So if you just went to mug.ca slash. Um, so what we can do So in this case, nginx.conf is the default, so I'll just go ahead and overwrite it. Um, so that's that. This is going to get probably, I'll just do this. So in this case, I get a file that I placed inside earlier. Um, just says hello world. Uh, so yeah, case in point, it just acts like a typical browser, nothing, or a web server, nothing special. Um, guess, so there's a few that I want to go through just to show various things. Um, I've also happened to install um, <coughs> PHP FPM on, on my system. So difference to Apache, Apache can do PHP in, in, in process uh, via module. 
Um, Nginx does not, as far as I know, have the capability. The accepted kind of way of doing that is by using uh, FPM. So PHP just listens on a socket. Whether or not you want to do TCP or, or a Unix socket, up to you. Um, and you just tell it where it's listening. Nginx will pass its traffic to PHP, <coughs> get the response, and pipe back to the browser. Um, so in this case, no real differences. Uh, other than we we just specify another location block saying if uh, if the file ends in .php, pass it over to PHP so it can do its job, so it can process the file, um, and and then it just passes the response back. So in this case, So the other thing I guess I should mention is because I'm not changing the index from, like they're just still HTML and HTM, uh, Nginx does a internal redirect um, to look for those files. Uh, I could specify, and it probably, in like if this was in the wild, you'd have index.php if it was a PHP server, um, probably before other guys, um, or maybe just by itself, index.php, so it knew which file it was going to get, um, or check to see if it was there. Because I don't have that, in this case, if I try and just do a curl, you'll see the HTML file get served up, but I can go to index.php, and then there's a PHP script that, again, is inside, that just says IP, uh, you know, LLP, PHP world. Um, so easy peasy. Um, let's see here. Third one. Because uh, I'm a big fan of Node and I use it on a lot of servers now, um, I figured I'd give you guys a, uh, an example of what the config would look like for that one. Um, fairly straightforward. In this case, all we have to specify is proxy pass. Um, anything that Nginx gets, it will just pass over to a node, um, a node daemon that's also running. So I'm just going to... Is that a typo or are you deliberately sending it to that address? Not it. Deliberately. The 127.1 yeah. will expand to 127.0.0.1. It's supposed to get INAT address C call actually does some crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> It's part of the spec. It, okay. It's valid. It's part of the spec that nobody uses. Right. Which looks wrong. Can okay, you do that? Well, I mean, IPv6 mm -hmm. has its own variation with like colon, colon, two, and stuff yeah, like that, right? It's explicit. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, in that case, just passes it over to lo uh, localhost, port 3000. I don't think I have anything running on that right now. It's not, no, only Nginx is running. Uh, so I'm just going to start that up. Considering this is a, an Nginx talk, I don't think there's a whole lot of point in covering how to run node daemons. Um, so there you go. Node's running on port 3000. Um, Actually, probably have this guy. Why not? So now if we curl node, we get, or curl nginx, sorry, uh, hello node JS world. Um, the does it actually monitor the configuration file for changes? Or? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm doing is restarting it. Um, it. It's as simple as, in this case, systemctl restart nginx. Um, I'm just doing that in a different window that we're yeah. not seeing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> System CTL. Restart. Nginx. <laughs> well, see, that's the problem, right? You'd see a lot of this and see a lot of me typing in root passwords yeah. um, or see a lot of that because um, yeah. I don't use sudo. I know. Bad user. Actually, um, BSD dropped it. Maybe not so bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. 
It has its usefulness. You can still download it, though. I know. It's still downloaded. It's still downloaded. So, this case is fairly contrived because it, it doesn't, it's not the most useful. Um, we're just passing absolutely every request through Nginx to Node. Um, there's probably not a whole lot of cases that you're going to want to do that. I mean, even if someone tried hitting your index page, uh, it's just going to pass it on through Node. So unless you're using Node for your complete web server. Reverse proxy. Yeah. That's a reverse proxy right yeah. there. Yeah, but it, SS, SSL termination, if you want to do it that way. I suppose. Because your Node.js processes don't have to be on the same host. Right. Yeah, and you could specify multiples and use Nginx to do oh, like failover. Exactly that yeah. Introduction. Right. Well, not nodes, but, yeah. but just having this config, probably not the most useful. You're going to want to throw other things in there, like the SSL or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Three bumps. Um, but most websites probably have some static files included. Uh, in this case, uh, like I showed just a second ago. We're just getting the the response response from Node, so Nginx is just passing it on to the Node, um, which is just this guy just says that. <coughs> so, to something a little more realistic would be something like this. Uh, again, very similar to the base con uh, base config that I'm showing you guys. Uh, in this in this case, we're saying try files. So we're telling Nginx, whatever we get in the URI, check to see if the file exists. Uh, the second one there is if the directory exists. Uh, in this case, combined with the index, it'll look for the index.html and index.htm. If none of those things exist, if the files aren't there, uh, we're just saying, all right, try at node. So at node is reference to the location node, in which case, just like the other script, uh, the other config, proxy pass to our node daemon, which is listening on port 3000. Um, So now we get, if we hit the index page, index gets back because the index.html is there. Otherwise, if we type in literally anything else, um, a file that doesn't exist anyway, um, it'll pass it over to Node, and in this case, Node handles anything, and it's got a catch-all in there that just responds with, with that. Um, so something that's a, hopefully a little more useful. Um, the last thing that I want to cover is SSL slash TLS, um, just to show literally how, again, how easy, how minimal the config is. There there are a lot more knobs um, than I am showing. If I were to go through all of them, it would take forever and a day. Um, one of the things um, that I guess Node is useful for is performance tuning. Um, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I wouldn't expect that the same thing applies to every system. Um, one of the big things that you'll look at that that you'll find if you look for node performance stuff is send file um, Really nice. Um, I've done some some performance benchmarks on my system uh, Without using send file uh, send file for those of you who don't uh, know um, avoids or, or minimizes the what node or what nginx is sorry uh, has to do as far as tr uh, sending files to the browser um, so it's got a socket on one end that it can send traffic to and receive traffic from the browser. And then let's say a request comes in for a specific file, index.html, let's keep it simple. Um, Nginx has to read the file off disk and then send the, send the file probably in bytes or, or, or blocks to back to the browser. Um, but this is the Nginx process that's doing that. Uh, send file, on the other hand, basically utilizes the the kernel to, to leverages the kernel to send that instead. Um, so the kernel is, is just going to be reading from one file descriptor and sending it back out through another file descriptor that you specify. So the one file descriptor will be the file, the other one will be the socket. Um, so when I was doing my, my benchmark tests, um, I was able to get uh, Nginx's CPU usage way lower than, than what it would normally be. Um, you know, I'd, I'd run a number of 
Nginx processes, in this case eight, because that's how many cores this guy has. And they'd all be around 50% switch on send file in their hand, and we've got one or two Nginx processes that are around 20%, so they're just sitting there twiddling their thumbs, sleeping most of the time. Um, so yeah, lots of options. Even when you're talking SSL, you can you've got options for enabling which ciphers and so on. Um, so all those tunables are there. So let's just show this guy. So now we're listening on 443, serving up, um, doing SSL on those. In this case, I don't have a valid cert. <coughs> So we can just do dash K to ignore the cert. Um, but it is, if we do this more verbosely, you'll see, hopefully, the cert itself, SSL connection. Um, so there's that. Questions? Straightforward? I'll only point out one other thing that Nginx can do. It can also proxy generic TCP connections, not just HTTP, which has really be a lifesaver. Seriously? Can it do that with SSL? Uh, I believe so. SSL is so. on top of uh, TCP, so yeah. it's actual TCP. I believe it can. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I'm actually using it to proxy SSH. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Okay. Guess that's it.